you will. What? <laughs> but why, Death Pony? <laughs> Welcome back to another Steam Free to Play review. Today we have Rogue Reaper, which just seemed to come out. It focuses on the Black Plague in Europe, and you play as the Grim Reaper's daughter. Because all these people are dying and the Grim Reaper's like over flooded with paperwork, which is the worst thing ever. And you're trying to figure out what the cause of everyone dying is, so you go to the human realm to try and figure it out. This game is pretty neat, it's a 3D like platformer action adventure game. Not much adventure, but that's what it's labeled as, action adventure. It's more of just like a 3D platformer with some fighting in it. Look at all those papers, man. <laughs> oh, that's awful. His daughter just wants to go out and play ball, but he's over flooded with the paperwork. She's got a little plague mask, which is really cool. Like a plague doctor mask, which is kind of like... They do really good with setting up the uh, setting. It's like... All of it pulls from like the lore of the Black Plague, where you had the Plague Doctors with their bird mask, and then you had the the rats that were spreading the plague and stuff like that. They did really well with the uh, like overall story and setting. It's a really short game though, and really the whole first part is pretty much a tutorial, and then you have the end part, which is a boss fight. The boss fight is really well done. I, that was pretty much the best part of the game for me. I don't know why this is lagging so bad. I hope it like stops whenever I actually publish the game. But it wasn't lagging when I was recording it. I don't know why it's lagging now. Also, I had to change the set, uh, graphics to medium because when I tried to play it on like the default, as soon as I started playing the game, it like crashed. Like I tried to sneak attack this rat and it just crashed immediately. I don't know if that's my computer or what. I have a pretty good computer though. I don't know why some of these games just crash for me. The platforming in this game is pretty neat because not only do you have a jump, you have a wall run, which like the way he does the platforming mechanics in this could be like really interesting if the world was larger because you could go to a lot of things that normally wouldn't be able to like you know how some platformers restrict you where you can't get to certain things with the mechanics in this game it feels like you could really explore like a huge world so that would be really dope if he like creates a sequel or or a different game with like the same kind of mechanics i don't know if this is kind of like a test run before he like makes another game you do get ability points, but this isn't like XP ability points, it's like progressing through the stage kind of thing. It took me forever to figure this out, but you don't actually click and hold over the item, the skill you want. You have to click and hold over the lock key for those skills. So if you want the parkour, you gotta put it over that lock, which took me longer than I would like to admit to figure that out. Because I was like, just, I had my mouse over the shoes and I was clicking it, I was like, give me the power, God! Uh, the sight does not hit as far as it looks, like the animation looks like it's too far. Get away from me! <laughs> God. And this, uh, I actually figured out at this part that that middle circle thing is not your energy. It's your health. Which is also your energy for like telekinetic things. Like when you use the telekinesis, it takes a little bit of this. This is one of the things where I think like using the platforming elements that you're allowed, the mechanics. That would show us kind of like if this was a bigger game, how you could do really cool things with the wall run and the double jump and just like, there could, it could open up a lot more exploration if he ever makes another game with like a bigger map. The game's really pretty too for the 3D graphics and I, the Steam thing said they made it in 11 weeks, which is pretty impressive. There's no reason to kill the enemies, really, besides trying to figure out the game mechanics and trying to get achievements, because you could just run through everything and just get to the final boss. There's no, like, XP or anything for doing it, so... There's no, like, reward for killing things, and it's kind of just bland. Don't let that scythe mechanic trick you. It is not as long as it looks with that wind blade or whatever. 
I died <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. This boss fight's actually really well done, so I'd like to see a game where they have more boss fights because they seem to have a pretty good grasp on how to make boss fights work. Because the more you play it, the more you figure out what you're supposed to do. Because it doesn't really tell you what to do. And you just gotta kind of figure out by like looking at everything by playing it the best way to beat the boss, which is fun. It keeps it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, there's not really phases, but it is challenging, and it yeah. gets a little bit more challenging. I guess the phases would be, like, yeah. Yeah. how he destroys a little yeah. bit of the map every time you hit him, so that's kind of, like, his phase. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I thought the boxes, you yeah. could actually just hit him with the boxes once you got his shield off, but that's not how it works at all. <laughs> I was like, why did you take damage? I hit you with a box! <laughs> Also, those pulls yeah. on the ground also make it more difficult and make you have to think a little bit more while you're playing it. Because yeah. they stay there permanently. They don't just like fade over time yeah. like you've seen most boss fights. And this yeah. telekinesis is pretty neat too. Because, uh... Yeah, I thought I could just hit him and he'd die, but I was wrong. Terribly wrong. <laughs> and when you're close to him, it's an instant kill. But the telekinesis works pretty neat because... The... Donnie? So the telekinesis we were talking about, um... So it doesn't have, like, fall, so it hits exactly where you target it, which is nice. And for whatever reason, this would not let me hit the unicorn horn! Like, I was smacking it, and it was just like, no, insta-kill. <laughs> Get screwed. But, uh, yeah, this game gets a 6 out of 10, because... Even though it has a lot of potential, it's still a really short game, and there's really not many super entertaining things to do yet besides the boss fight. The boss fight was really enjoyable, but that was like, once you get that figured out, it's the game's pretty much over, and just like one fight's not really enough to get it rated higher than a 6 out of 10. It does have really cool mechanics and it has so much potential, but hopefully the next game the studio comes out with will be a little bit bigger. I think they're definitely on the right track though. Thanks for watching as always. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!